Hi everybody, this is Jim Aiken, and this month I'm going to take a quick look at what FM synthesis is all about. FM stands for frequency modulation, and of course every oscillator has a frequency control and you can probably modulate that with almost anything, but FM specifically refers to a situation in which you have two oscillators and one of them is modulating the frequency of the other. In this case, we have two FM op uh, modules, and the output from this one is going into the FM input of this one here. And this knob here, the depth, controls the amount of FM. Now, these oscillators both produce sine waves. And this one is set to a very low frequency, and when the modulating signal from this oscillator is very low, what FM is, is vibrato. And you will see it in the scope at the left. So as you can see, we've got a sine wave and it's increasing and decreasing in frequency. But as the frequency of the modulator increases, when it gets up into the audio range, which is about 20 hertz, 20 cycles per second, we will no longer hear it as if it were vibrato. We're going to hear it as a timbre change. So I'm going to do that. Now I'm going to turn this knob up gradually so that you can hear what happens. Now, if the frequencies of the two oscillators are at a simple numerical relationship, we're going to get a more um, pleasant musical tone. I'm going to double click this knob so that it will go to its default. And these two modules here uh, are used simply to make it easy to switch octaves and stuff like that. So let's start with the two oscillators at the same octave. Well, that doesn't sound quite right, does it? You know why? Because this knob is set to a non-zero value. Let's try that again. There you go. In our equal tempered scale, only the value of zero here will be exactly in tune. Now let's take it down an octave. Let's take them both down an octave and then do a little bit of detuning to make the tone more lively. So right away you can hear that that may be a musically useful uh, tone color. At the moment these two oscillators are at the same frequency. What happens if we leave this one low and bring this one up high? Let's try that. Now at the moment we have quite a lot of depth here, so I'm going to reduce the depth while keeping the tuning the way it was. When we get down to about that point, we have a nice tone with some highs and some lows, as you can hear. You can see it on the scope. Let's reduce the octaves here. As you can see in the scope, even though the FM operator module only produces sine waves, when we add FM, the signal, as seen in the scope, no longer resembles a sine wave very much. And the more we turn this up, the less it will look like a sine wave.
unfortunately, the scope isn't very good at uh, giving you a good picture of what that tone uh, looks like, but that's the best we can do. Now, the other thing we can do, and this is actually kind of interesting, what happens if instead of having this one at a very low frequency to produce vibrato, let's turn this one down to a very low frequency and tune this one to something like an ordinary frequency. When the carrier, this is the carrier over here, when the carrier is at a very low frequency as an LFO, FM actually produces chorusing in effect. So it's a kind of a nice sound. Let's lower the octave. Now, each of these operators has its own envelope, its own amplitude envelope generator, which is over here on the right, attack, decay, sustain, release. And I have now turned on the envelope for the modulator. So I'm going to play a note and let you hear what happens. Watch the scope. As you can hear, in this type of patch, an FM patch sort of operates the way a low-pass filter would. You've got more high frequencies at the start, and then because this operator is decreasing in amplitude, because the decay knob is dropping down to the sustain level, the overtones in the carrier, which is what we're listening to, drop away. Now, at the moment, these two operators have the same frequency. If I increase this one, something interesting might happen. Let's find out. This operates sort of like a bandpass filter in the sense that both lows and highs are present in the tone initially, and then they go away, leaving mainly the tone of this operator, which is at a higher frequency. To finish up, let's look at a slightly more complicated patch. This is one of the possible configurations that you could use for FM. This is a, a configuration that has three modulators all of which are being mixed in the mixer, and then the output of the mixer is going to the FM input of the carrier. And each of these modulators has a different frequency and a different envelope characteristic. The first one, let's listen to it without even the first one. All we're gonna get is a sine wave from the carrier. Well, that's pretty boring. So let's add an attack transient just this tiny click from over here. And you'll notice that the click is not even in tune with the carrier. We can set it wherever we want it. Now let's add uh, a low, low bass type tone to it. This modulator has a very slow attack, a long decay, and a rather low sustain level. Now we're going to add a different sound from the third modulator. It's, it has a slightly longer attack than the little ticky sound.
So once you start to get into this uh, type of patching, you'll discover that there is really quite a lot that you can do with uh, FM synthesis. Thank you.